Hello, welcome to Working Dragon Mystic, where we discuss real, metaphysical, and occult knowledge so that you can manifest real and tangible change in your life. This week, we're going to be discussing the Zodiac Dragons, so stay tuned. Okay, so ever since we've done our video on the dragons of the planets or planetary dragons, we have been getting a lot of requests to go ahead and cover the Zodiac Dragon video that I mentioned in that video. And if you haven't watched that video already, go over to our Dragon Magic playlist, which I'll make sure is linked here, and be sure to check out that video. Okay, so this week we're going to be discussing Zodiac Dragons. Now, a lot of people, when you start talking about the Zodiac Dragons, their immediate thought is to jump toward their horoscope sign, doing star charts and that kind of thing. Again, in Dragon Magic, we're not going to necessarily be working with those. The focus is going to be more on Draconic Alchemy and making changes to the energies around us using these dragons and the traits thereof. So all these dragons will have certain traits that they utilize, and much like the planetary dragons, you can bring in the traits you want and increase them, and you can lessen the traits you don't want. So we're just going to be touching on a few of these, and again, these are dragons that um, they don't have specific rulers for each of the zodiac because they're tied to the elemental rulers. So you will again be looking toward those four elemental rulers um, for the Zodiac, which if you look at the Dragon's Ass Seal, which I have behind me, you can easily see how the different Zodiacs align with the different elements in the Dragon's Ass Seal as well. So let's get started here, because we got a lot of this information to go through. So the first ones that we're going to cover is Aries. Aries Dragons, and I do apologize, I do have notes here because this is a lot to cover in the video. So I do have a few notes. So if you see me looking down, I apologize. Um, but the Aries dragons, these dragons fall under the element of fire. Um, the common colors that Aries, drag Aries dragons usually appear in will be black, red, and orange. Um, the ruling planet of Aries is Mars. And traits that you're gonna find um, that you can work with and help get you started anyways. A few of them, mind you, this is just a short list, this is not fully comprehensive, um, would be energetic, impatient, lack of foresight, quick-tempered, demanding, adventurous, sharp of mind, tongue, and wit. Now, some of these are positive, some of these are negatives. Again, all things have that balance. So, again, if you have someone who's already short-tempered, you might want to lessen the amount of Aries energy that they have, and that would be a way that you could do this, is working with Aries dragons. Um, if you are wanting to sharpen your mind, though, you could also use Aries dragons to help in that area. Again, just as an example. The next ones are the Taurus dragons. These dragons often present as blue, green, and brown. The ruling planet for Taurus, um, in my notes, is Venus. And the ruling element of Taurus is Earth, and because of that, the elemental ruler of Earth would also be the dragon you would go to for these. Energetic traits of Taurus that you could utilize the Taurus dragons to help you with is things like loyalty, emotional st stability, um, stubbornness, becoming more practical, dependable, dealing with issues of materialism, um, possessiveness, and to help you in becoming more determined in your goals. Next up, we have the dragons of Gemini. These dragons often present in uh, multicolored or rainbow. They really don't have anything that really shows up um, in a set way. So honestly, the best way I can describe them is multicolored and rainbowed. Um, the ruling planet for Gemini is Mercury, and the ruling element is air. So the, the uh, draconic ruler of air, Zephyr Sil, would be the dragon in which you would reach out to for these particular dragons. And 
a few traits that uh, Gemini works with and that could they could help you with is versatility, um, fickleness, curiosity, um, being a little high strung, flirty, changeability, anxiety, um, feelings of being petty, superficial, and they can help a lot in areas of communication. Next on the list is dragons of cancer. Um, these dragons appear mostly in colors of silver, white, and dark blue. And again, these are just averages. It's not always. Um, the ruling planet of Cancer is the moon. And the ruling element of Cancer dragons is water. So you'd be looking to the elemental ruler of water, Cor Allegra, for these dragons. And a quick list of traits to get you started would be caring, nurturing, moody, clingy, lazy, retentive memory, receptive, changeability, sensitive, hoarder, emotional, overprotective, and messy. So these are aspects that you could actually work with the Cancer Dragons to help you work on and to make better and replace with other traits. So if you are being a little too clingy, you might want to find out if you got too much of that cancer energy in you and you want to balance that out with something else a bit more independent. Okay, next we have dragons of Leo. Um, these dragons often present in gold or scarlet. Um, these are actually some really beautiful dragons in my opinion. Um, the ruling planet for these dragons is the sun. And no surprise, the ruling element is fire. So you're going to be looking toward the draconic ruler of fire, Ingus Salor, when you're working with these dragons. And of course, the traits to get you started um, would be optimistic, warm, dynamic, um, organizational. Now, I wrote it as organizational because they can actually swing to both sides. They can be very organized or very disorganized. But if they do have that disorganized style to it, there is a method to their madness. Somehow they still know where everything's at. Um, so that's a fascinating little aspect for me. Um, Hardworking, persistent, dramatic, colorful, generous, arrogant. And they can also be very good at helping to inspire you and others. Next we have Virgo. Um, these dragons present often in colors of gray, brown, and navy blue. Um, honestly, the navy blue and the gray ones I find to be particularly beautiful dragons. Um, the ruling planet for Virgo is Mercury. And the ruling element is Earth. So again, you're going to be look, looking toward the elemental ruler of Earth, Terra Fauna, when working with these dragons. The traits that um, Virgo um, works with and that you can utilize that draconic alchemy to either increase or reduce would be neat, fussy, conservative, efficient, studious, um, a worrier. They can be very practical, logic, um, even workaholics, um, and analytical. Um, I actually, due to the fact that most people do know I'm a workaholic, I actually get accused of being a Virgo a lot, um, so, but I'm not. But at the same time, I do find that the Virgo energy, so if you're someone who does have a hard time getting motivated to complete projects and stuff, that Virgo energy is a great place to go and kind of pull on that workaholic nature to get that um, get up and go and that drive to complete a project. Just do be aware if you do this, you're going to want to rebalance it out because not everybody enjoys being a workaholic. Um, I do my work because it's something I enjoy. And even when I'm relaxing, I tend to be researching something because it, it is a, an enjoyment to me. So um, if that's not the case and you don't rebalance that, you're going to find yourself pushed and stressed. And that's not what you want. So be aware of that. And that's actually the beauty of this um, type of working because you can shift and change those energies as you need them, when you need them in your life. Um, which we will be doing a video more specifically on Draconic Alchemy. 
Uh, right now we're just covering the planetary dragons and the zodiac dragons so that you can start reaching out and talking with the rulers and potentially meeting these dragons and getting ready for those workings. Okay, next up we have the dragons of Libra. These dragons often appear in light blue, soft rose tones, and even blue-green. The ruling planet of Re my apologies. The ruling planet of Libra is Venus, and the ruling element is air. So again, here you're going to reach out to that elemental ruler of air, Zephyr Seal. Um, traits to get you started working with Libra would be refined, diplomatic, facilitating, vain, just, artistic, gentle, tactful gracious and peace loving so here you're starting to see signs that really can help balance out some of those more aggressive signs and speaking of that brings us to our next one and a personal favorite of mine um scorpio so the colors of scorpio tend to be those really deep reds those crimsons um, and black um, the ruling planet for scorpio is pluto and the ruling element is water. So again, you're going to be reaching out and working with the elemental ruler of water, Cora Allegra. I know so many of you out there absolutely love her. Um, she gets mentioned practically every live stream, either her, her or Ingus. Um, both of them seem to be very popular amongst those taking the Dragon Magic 101 course, um, which I'll make sure there's a link to below if you are interested in that. Um, and the traits for the Scorpio that you, to get you started would be secretive, intelligent, gifted in psychic abilities or talents so they can pick up those um, skill sets really easily. Um, they can be manipulative. They are very passionate, um, stubborn, deceitful. They can be a tricksy lot. Um, but they are also very, very resourceful individuals and they're vindictive. Make an enemy of a Scorpio, you got an enemy for life, most likely. Um, tenacious and methodical. So these are all traits that you can either utilize to help you in areas if you need it, or to um, recognize negatives that you might want to balance out with another sign. Okay, next we have Sagittarius, which the color for Sagittarius um, dragons tends to be that purple and those deep blues very beautiful colors um the ruling planet for Ju uh, sagittarius is jupiter and the ruling element is fire so here you've got inga salor the ruler of the dragons of fire showing up again and that's who you'd be reaching out for to get in touch with dragons of sagittarius um traits to get you started working with these and stuff you might look at is outspoken, freedom-loving, independent, warm, outgoing, spiritual, athletic, opportunist, and inspiring. Uh, this is another one I get accused of because I am a very outspoken person. Um, those who know me and know me well know I have trouble keeping my mouth shut. Um, there's really not a good filter between my brain and my mouth. And freedom. Um, if it comes to taking a freedom away, that's not something I'm, I'm okay with at any level. So I do get accused of this a lot and I do have a very independent nature. I don't like um, relying on people. So those are traits that I definitely do have, but again, I'm not a Sagittarius. We haven't got to me yet. Um, and of course you got the Capricorn dragons. These dragons can show up in dark shades of all colors. Um, I absolutely love Capricorn dragons. I love deep tones and colors. So working with them is always fun for me because I just love to see the colorations on their scales. It's beautiful. Um, the ruling planet for Capricorn dragons is Saturn and the ruling element is Earth. And the traits that you can look at to get you started with working with dragons of Capricorn is rigid, Practical, loner, uh, managerial, persistent, sarcastic humor, prudent, efficient, 
miserly. Um, they can come off a bit cold, emotionally speaking. Pessimistic, patient, ruthless, and ambitious. And the dragons of Aquarius is next. Now, the color that these dragons often appear in is an iridescent blue and deep purples and pearl. And the ruling planet for the dragons of Aquarius is Uranus. And, of course, the ruling element of the Aquarius dragons, no surprise, with Aquarius being an air sign, is air. So, you've got Zephyrsil, the draconic ruler of air, is the ones that would oversee the Aquarius dragons. Some of the traits that are known for working with Aquarius dragons that you may want to increase or reduce depending on what you need, again, is perceptive, temperamental, organized, erratic, cool, detached, ingenious, impersonal, goal-oriented, insightful, self-expressive, and unconventional. This one's me. I am an Aquarius, and when you pay attention to these, it makes sense. Um, I can be moody. I can be a grump. That's one reason my wife won't let me make it five minutes when I wake up without coffee. She immediately makes sure I have coffee if I haven't already made it myself. Um, I do tend to be pretty perceptive in most things, though probably not my people skills. Um, I do come off very detached. This is something that my family always thinks something's wrong with me because of that. But I also, my workaholicness comes from that goal-oriented personality. If I have a goal, I'm going to just go at it full steam until I reach it. Um, and I do obviously per pursue things in a very unconventional way. Um, which I guess makes sense when you consider, look where I'm at in my life right now. I don't think this would count as conventional for anybody. Um, but I do also like to pull from the other signs using the draconic alchemy and try to pick up those different things and work in areas where I need to. Um, one thing that I really do have trouble with, and I think I've talked about it a few times on this channel, is communication. I'm terrified of cameras. Laugh at me if you will. I know a YouTuber who is terrified of cameras, but it's true. Um, thank God for editing. So there are some of these traits where I could probably use more of. I could probably use a bit more of that self-expression and whatnot to help me overcome that camera um, phobia. But then again, I don't know, because uh, you see me on live streams when I forget the camera's there, I'm pretty expressive, so I don't know. It, sometimes it can be a tricky one to balance those out. And next we have Pisces, which the colors that the Pisces dragons will show up in are greens, blues, and the blues will be similar to, um, think of, Waterways and oceans would be the best I could say. So you're going to expect those more watery style blues within these. Um, the ruler, the ruling planet is Neptune. And of course with the coloring, um, the ruling element is water. And because of that, you're going to have the draconic ruler of water, Cor Allegra, who is going to be overseeing the Pisces dragons. And the list of traits to get you started um, in your notes working with these dragons is refined, shrewd, impractical, nagging, unstable, um, can be considered con artist at times, impressionable, compassionate, escapist or drifter. These are um, dreamers and intuitive. So that covers all the different zodiacs and a few traits, just a few, let me reiterate, just a few of the traits that these dragons would work with. Now I say just a few because I want to give you something to get you started, perhaps that you can look at this list and say, do I have too much of this? Do I have too little of this? And now, what would you do with this information now that you have it? Um, well, you're going to reach out to these particular dragons and you would do so by reaching out to the elemental ruler that they over um, that they fall under and ask them to introduce you to a 
um, zodiac dragon of the particular zodiac you're wanting to work with. So, for example, let's say you want to work with um, a Scorpio dragon. So you would reach out to Cora Allegra and you'd let her know you're wanting to work with a Scorpio dragon. And you would ask her to introduce you to a Scorpio dragon that would work well with you. And that's what would happen. And from there, you'd begin to build that relationship with that particular Scorpio dragon. And from there, you could actually dive deeper into more energy patterns and traits that the Scorpio dragons do work with. And you can learn more directly from them, really filling out your list and your knowledge base. Um, you could actually dedicate an entire journal to each of these and fill that journal up and still not be done, in all honesty. But you would spend time meditating on you and the different traits and aspects that you have. So what I would recommend doing is sit down and what I like to do first is I like to focus on what are my strengths and I figure those out and then I ask myself what are my current weaknesses that are holding me back or preventing me from accomplishing my current goals. And when I identify those, then I will look at the zodiac dragons and I'll find out where those negatives fall into that. So that tells me what dragon energy I might have too much of. And then I ask myself, what is the opposite of that? Now, the reason I ask what the opposite of these negatives are is because A, either I need to go to the zodiac dragon that has that so I can reduce it, or I need to find a zodiac dragon that has the exact opposite so I can bring in more of that energy to balance it out better. And I'll make my decision on which way to proceed, again, through meditation and speaking with my co-magician and my guardian as to the best route. And then I'll reach out to the zodiac dragons accordingly and adjust the energy in me and transmute it so that I can be the best me to reach and achieve my goals at this time. So I do this adjustment regularly, probably once a month. Um, and I'm making sure that energetically I am set up to achieve whatever it is I'm working on at that time to maximum effect. And this is actually one of the absolute best benefits of the way these energies in Draconic Alchemy works. Anyways, I hope you've enjoyed this video and I really do hope you take the time to reach out to the rulers and get in touch with a zodiac dragon. Um, even if it's just to get in touch with whatever your zodiac sign is to make a friend and learn more about your particular energies that um, associate with your zodiac sign. Anyways, thank you for joining us. Be sure to smash that like button. I'm Drake and this has been Working Dragon Mystic. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.